Early blighted potato is caused by a fungus called Alternaria solani. And there's a related fungus called Alternaria alternata, which causes a disease called brown spot. Both of these diseases are present in potatoes in southern Idaho and can cause significant economic damage. This is a picture of a variety called Western Russet. It is highly susceptible to both early blight and brown spot. And when those fungi get in this crop, it can completely defoliate the, the potato, the leaves and the vines um, without any protection measure. Here, these plots are almost 80 to 90% defoliated from the early blight and brown leaf spot pathogens. Oftentimes, in this area, about 75% of all the lesions that we evaluate appear to be caused by Alternaria solani. The other 25% appear to be caused by Alternaria alternata. Now, sometimes those diseases will look very different. It's common for Alternata to start at the top of the plant and work its way down. And oftentimes those lesions are very small. It almost looks like someone took a pepper shaker and sprinkled it on top of the leaves. Early blight often starts at the lower leaf and works its way up. Early blight is, is very much influenced by the nutrition of the crop. And so if a grower has very good fertility, plant fertility, it can delay the onset of early blight significantly. In fact, a grower could put on enough nitrogen that they could almost keep the early blight out of their crop with some varieties. The problem being is if they use too much nitrogen, then they delay the proper um, maturity of the crop. And so they don't get good tubers. They get more vine growth than they get tubers. So traditionally, we felt it's best to manage the crop fertility-wise in a way that will give them the most optimal yield. And then to manage the early blight or the brown leaf spot, we rely on fungicides. And that's what I have over here on this side of me. These plots over here have been exposed to the, the same pathogen in the same way, but they're only showing about 10% defoliation at this point in time. And that is due to the fungicides that were used. Typically, we put a fungicide on right about the time of row closure. And then for us in southern Idaho, it's common to repeat those applications on about a 14-day schedule. With a variety like Western Russet, something more aggressive like a 10-day schedule might be required. In certain parts of the state, growers may apply as many as six times, or on the east side of the state where the pressure is lower, they may only apply twice. But regardless, the fungicides that we have have been very effective in controlling early blight if they've been applied in a timely manner and the interval between the applications has not been too high. One thing that's characteristic of early blight caused by the Alternaria solani is that the lesions will often appear like a target, like a bullseye type target. So you'll get concentric rings inside the lesions. And oftentimes, early on, those lesions will appear to be constricted by the veins. That's one way that you can tell early blight from late blight. Now, there are some intergradations, and, and both diseases can appear similar. But a good rule of thumb is if you have concentric lesions, and it appears to be limited to some degree by the vein, then most likely you're dealing with early blight. Now, obviously, as the lesions get, um, get older or the they grow and become more severe, they will cross the vein, but typically early on you'll see a constriction at the vein. With some varieties, the lesions or the spores that are they will simply stay on the soil and then the following year, say when I plant potatoes over on another field, these spores can be blown by the wind off the soil and move to the next field and cause infection the following spring.